Hey there, my name is Brian Baldwin. I wanted to give a quick introduction to the spatial analysis tools in ArcGIS Online. So, a lot of people jump right to ArcGIS Pro or start using Desktop GIS to map data and analyze data. But I just want to remind people that there are so many good analysis tools inside of ArcGIS Online especially those that are getting started with spatial analysis in GIS. So one example of that is in Rochester, New York. So in Rochester, I wanted to map out and understand what the relationship to crashes are in the city. So really simply, we can add crash data into the map and just visualize those as points. And then another simple metric that we could run inside of ArcGIS Online, this is a standard spatial statistic tool that can also be run in ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro is to find the mean center. And what is that ellipse of the standard deviation for where the majority of crashes are? So interesting, right? And then the next analysis we can run is a density. So sometimes referred to as a hotspot, but really it's just kind of looking at where the clusters are of those crashes and where is that, you know, the, the most prevalent. So all of these tools were run inside of ArcGIS Online, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. And the second one, and the second use case I think is also almost more powerful, are some of the ways you can do networks and routing and also flow. So in this one, looking at the highway and there was a recent crash, let's say a gasoline truck um, tipped over in that one location. So very, very quickly, people need to know where is that spill, where is that um, poison or whatever it is going to flow into the waterways and start to impact either groundwater or surface flow, etc. And so very quickly you can run a tool in ArcGIS Online to do that flow determinant. Where is that spill going to end up and what are mitigations that you could start to put in place right away? So these are just a couple quick examples of the tools that are in ArcGIS Online. But let's do a quick run through a demonstration to just show you how you can get started and really how powerful some of the tools up there are. So I'm starting here in Rochester, New York, and we have an array of crash data that's pulled into the map. And this is all the crash data for Monroe County that involved a pedestrian or bicycle from 2011 to 2020. And I can look at the attribute table for this data to look at the, all the information here and better understand it. You can see we've got a little over 5,000 records, which is a pretty good size set of information. And many people might not even think of doing you know, an analysis with this much data in ArcGIS Online, but it's still a great place to start for doing some of these initial discussions and discoveries of what insights might be within your data set. So right up here on the top of the ribbon is a toolbar for analysis. I'm gonna click that analysis tool. And there are a number of different buckets for analytical results that we have here. And you can see I'm clicking through summarize data, find locations, data enrichment. So go through and explore to see what type of tool and analytic might meet your needs. In this case, I'm trying to understand what the density of these collisions and these accidents look like. So the first tool I'm gonna to run is one that is pretty straightforward. We just wanna summarize the center and understand the dispersion of the accidents and these collisions are law in Monroe County. So I select my layer. So I just have the one layer in the map, this crashes. What other summary types do I want? Let's get the mean center, the median center, and what type of ellipse. So I'm gonna get one standard deviation. I could get two or three to see how many of those points actually fall within that ellipse. Do I wanna add a weight? And for all of these options, you can select the little information icon to understand that tool a little bit more and what that parameter means. Do I wanna group by and what do I wanna name this layer? And do I wanna use the current extent or not? So make sure you're aware of this as well. And in this case, I do not. I wanna use all of the data, but if you're creating a map and you have data pulled in from the Living Atlas or somewhere else, 
be cautious of this because it could end up running for a long time or not resulting in you know getting a result. And let's run the analysis. So the analysis sometimes might take a few seconds or minutes to actually run, but you'll see it spinning up here as it goes out and actually builds that analytical result for you. So after the result runs, it gets added into the map and draws for us. So this result, at least for me, is not a huge shock. I'm seeing that the majority of those pedestrian and vehicle accidents are happening more towards the, set, the city center and not in some of these suburbs or the outlying areas of Rochester and Monroe County. So the next tool that I want to run is something that can actually show me what sometimes is referred to as a heat map. It is really just kind of a density analysis. So let's go back to the analysis ribbon. And for my density, the choice is under analyze patterns. And so within here, there are also a number of other fantastic, really powerful spatial analytic tools. Finding hotspots. So this is actually finding statistically significant areas within my data set. Finding outliers. Clusters are doing interpolations. In this case, I just want to run the calculate density tool. And again, for each of these, there's the information icon to actually let you know what specifically this tool set is. And I'm just going to run this calculate density tool. So I select that ensure that I have the right input data selected. In this case, I want to run it on my crashes data. What count field do I want to use? This could potentially be fatalities or injuries. And what do I want the layer name to be? And then ensure again, I uncheck that box in this case, so I get all that outlying data outside of my view. And then run the analysis. So after that tool completes, it also adds its results onto the map. And let me toggle that off so we can see it a little more clearly and actually turn off the crash data so we can see where that cluster of accidents are. So this is fantastic. I'm actually starting to see some of these other kind of clusters or areas that have a high density of these accidents. So this is really close to my spatial mean and median in that center of the data set but I can start to get a little bit more of a granular understanding of where some of these other areas of density might be for accidents. So those are just two tools that are really easy to run for this data set. Again, going against about almost 6,000 records and running this in ArcGIS Online. A really easy way to get people introduced to spatial analysis. The second type of analysis I wanted to run is something else I think is really powerful and oftentimes overlooked. So here's 590 running across and going on the outskirts of Rochester. Let's actually drop in here a pin. And so I'm going to create a new map notes layer. And I'm going to drop a pin where we just had a truck get overturned on 590. And so this truck had gasoline in it, this could have had diesel, and it's spilling all over the road and it's going to impact the local watershed. So what are the places that we need to go and mitigate? Where is this effluent or where is this chemical going to spill and end up? Right inside of the analysis tools, again, there are some incredibly powerful ways that you can run analysis on just a simple point like this. The ability to create view sheds or watersheds, or in this case, let's trace downstream. So I'm going to select this map point. We're going to trace downstream. I can clip this as well, and we'll give it a name. In this case, I just want to start at that pin and start running to see where this is going to go. And let's run the analysis. So the re result just got dropped into our map. And we can see immediately the power of this. In just about 10 seconds, I was able to place a pin on the map and run an analysis that in a desktop application could end up taking a long time to build out and find your data for. I didn't need to build 
a data set that gave me the floodplains and the flow of this topography. I could see here if a spill took place, this effluent or this chemical would end up flowing into this local water course heading in this general direction. So a fantastic hosted tool just built right into ArcGIS Online here. So that was a quick run through ArcGIS Online and some of the analysis tools that are just built right into the software. ArcGIS Pro is fantastic. There's a wealth of information and tools and ways to run analysis in the software. But if you want to introduce spatial analysis to students or others, or many times, if there's a question you're trying to ask that does not have millions of records, you could probably just run some of the hosted analysis tools right in ArcGIS Online. It's a lot easier to use, it's very accessible, and you can just get started really, really quickly by pulling data in from the Living Atlas, other hosted layers, or even open data that might be accessible already. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed that quick run through spatial analysis in ArcGIS Online. There's a lot more to see and explore, but I just wanted to do a quick introduction for the power of starting to explore this area. Thanks.